Welcome back to another episode of the Arc Switch Survival Guide. Today we are going to teach you the easiest way to tame an Argent Avis in Arc. This really simple and easy to make Argent Trap will make it really easy to tame a very high level Argent Avis. We just build the trap, lock him in like that, and now we can just knock him out. So it's an extremely easy and quick way to tame an Argent Avis. And it uses a very small amount of materials. You just need a few walls, foundation, and the ceiling, and you're good to go. And from here, we can knock out a very high level 138 male Argent Avis. And we have enough Tapehara Egg Kibble to be able to tame this guy at really high level. Now, you know me, if I'm taming just one dinosaur at a time, I get bored and go out and find something else to tame. So this is actually going to be the first part part of a quadruple tame in the Redwood Mountain, and we're going to tame a Dodicarus and two Archaeopteryx at the same time throughout this whole taming series. But today we are going to focus on how to tame a crazy high level Argent Avis very easily using a really small amount of supplies. So be sure to watch this whole episode, it's going to be extremely helpful for anyone who wants to tame a high level Argent Avis in Ark. Now this will be a longer video because this is a guide and let's play series, but if you're only interested in learning how to make the best Argent Avis trap, then use the links in the description. I'll put some timestamps down there so you can jump straight to the part you're interested in. But this whole video should be very helpful and quite entertaining too. Now, as usual, I'll start this easy Argent taming guide by showing you where to find an Argent Avis. Now, any of these squares that are green, it is a pretty good chance that Argents will spawn. They're pretty commonly found in these locations. Now, as you can see, it's mostly mountains. They're kind of rare anywhere in the snow biome, but they usually stick to mountains towards the middle of the map and Carnivore Island up here on the northeast. But today we are going to be heading from my plateau, which is right here, and we're going to follow this river all the way up to the base of the Redwoods where my raft fortress is currently parked. We'll stop for supplies and then head up to the middle of the mountain at the center of the Redwood Forest, which seems to be about the best place to find an Argent Avis. As as long as you can easily fly above the redwood trees and you don't have to go anywhere near the forest. So you need a flyer with a lot of stamina. Otherwise, you may want to stick to some of the other mountains because the redwoods are really dangerous if you have to go through them. So I've stocked up on supplies at my main base on this plateau in the jungle on the southern side of the island. And as you can see, I have a little bit of a Tapehara problem. Um, I've been breeding lots of them and I'm starting to feel like a crazy cat lady because I have like I don't know 10 15 tapeharas now I went a little overboard once I made a really good nursery for easily breeding and hatching tapeharas so yeah that's my bad but you know if you're interested in breeding lots of dinos I've got some great videos to teach you how to do it very quickly and efficiently so you can breed your own army of whatever your favorite dinos are now we've got a yellow loot drop and uh, usually there's at least a couple nasty raptors or spinosaurs right around here and I'm thinking about staying and seeing what drops down from it because yellow loot drops are usually really good but I'm on a mission I'm not gonna make you guys wait for me to see what happens there because it's gonna be a while before it finishes dropping so I'm just gonna rest for one second as we're heading down across the swamp so I've headed up that river from my plateau and then I'm going to start heading a little bit west towards the redwood forest in the middle of the map and I'm staying pretty high above the swamps because there's just some really nasty stuff that lives in there. Now I am checking the levels of the Paraceratheriums, there's like those big elephant camel like things and I'm going to tame one in the near future when I find a really high level one. I made a gigantic taming pen specifically so it'll be big enough to tame a huge Paraceratherium 
or Brontosaurus and be able to tame it at a super high level without taking any damage from it or allowing it to run away when it gets low on health. So that should be pretty great once we finally get that. And I'll show you how to build a walking base on top of that Parasair once we finally tame it. But for now, we're going to stop at my other mobile base. This is an entire base built on a raft, and we're going to grab some supplies here, stock up, grab some water so I don't starve or dehydrate while I'm taming stuff. And oh yeah, that's some delicious swamp water right there. And we'll grab some supplies and then head up to the mountain. So now we've got all the stuff we need for our taming expedition. We restocked with a lot of stuff that I've still got down in my base over here. I've just been leaving this down here at the base of the mountain because I've been planning to come back and tame a really high level male Argent Avis. Now I have a whole video that I did on how I tamed the female Argent Avis, which I have, and it's a very high level. It's been making my life so much easier, but I need to get a male that's also a high level so I can start breeding an army of Argents, and that will be really helpful throughout the rest of my game. So I am flying really high above the Redwood Forest, because if you go between the trees in the Redwoods, it's really likely that a Thylacoleo, or it's basically like a tiger, they will climb up the base of the trees, and anywhere in the tree it could be hiding, and they will pounce and fly across the screen and hit you and just bring you down and drag you to your death. So there's really nothing you can do if a Thylacoleo pounces on you. So I don't even go between the trees. I stay above the treetops. And I'm going to land here, and then we'll start scouting around and see if I can find some good Argent to tame. Now we've already got a couple that I can see, but uh, even though that guy looks really cool and he's a level Eight. I don't really want a level 8, so I'm going for something like 130, 150, something like that. Now, I see something off in the distance. Where is... Th oh, yeah, what, what in the world? Okay, so we have like a Christmas-colored Tyrannosaur, red and green, and he's just getting eaten by a raptor, and he just doesn't seem to care? I don't know. It looks like an alpha raptor. Maybe he's just given up on life, but... Uh, yeah, that's kind of crazy. I, I kind of want to see what's going to happen there, but I also don't want to get too close. So we'll be right back while I scout for a high-level Argent, and we'll come back when I find one. So I've been searching for a while, and even though I found this crazy cool looking red and purple Argent Avis, that is actually a female, and okay, here's something. Let's see here. Is this the dream guy for my Argent? Yes, it is. That is a male, level 138. It took me a while to find him, but I found like 15 to 20 Argents just circling around this mountain. There are just like everywhere around here. So that's part of what makes this mountain dangerous, but they don't usually attack you unless you get reasonably close, which I'm probably going to do. But I just want to double check the level, make sure I'm not crazy, because this guy seems to be stuck. And as convenient as that would be if he is actually stuck, I have a feeling he's going to pop out as soon as I move. Yep, level 138 male Argent. Now that is exactly what I'm looking for. So, since he seems to be pretty well preoccupied being stuck in a rock, I'm going to run up and actually build the Argent Avis trap that I'm going to use to tame him. Now, there's a couple things we need to do before we start building. This needs to be a relatively level place that we build this, and it's really helpful if we build it right on the the edge of a mountain or on the very peak of a mountain because that's going to let us fly across the trap and then down the other side and that'll make it much easier to get the Argent to actually fly downward and get him into the trap. The hardest thing about this method is Argents tend to fly a little bit on the high side and it's easy for them to go right over the roof. So I started by placing one stone foundation, and you need to do this with stone. And then I placed two stone door frames coming up from one side of that foundation. Then I'll put a ceiling up, and I'll place two more door frames so I can block off the other two sides. And we want to leave one part of this open so the Argent can actually get into that open space. Now this is perhaps the most important part, we need to place a stone door 
right here on the top opening right there. Now, as long as you've got that door, if the Argent gets trapped inside, you can open the door, and as soon as you open that door, it traps the Argent in there, because he can't move as long as that door is open. There we go. Now, I'm practicing a little bit, because you're going to have to run up and slam that door open while the Argent is actually trapped in there, and he's probably going to kick you a couple of times with his talons. Now, if the door opens from the side that's over the edge, he'll punt you right off the cliff and you'll die. And actually, the one that I built right here, I really should have built it on more level terrain because it's hard for me to reach this door. As you can see, I'm having some trouble here. So this may be really hard to trap the Argent because it's up the slope. Whereas if it was on more level terrain, I would be able to just run straight up to the door, reach it easily without having to jump so high, and then open it more quickly. So, you can learn from my mistake. It'll be much easier. Whoop, okay, he popped right out of there. No problem. Okay, I thought he might be stuck a little bit better, but nope, he just jumped right up, and now he is chasing me. So this is good. I want him to chase me right into that trap. And as you can see, it's right up on top of the slope, and it's going to be pretty easy for me to maneuver him into it from here. Now, you can do this trick with a Pteranodon or another Argent if you have one, but a Tapehara is the best thing to use because, first of all, they have pretty good stamina, and we're going to be flying away from this guy sprinting quite a lot. And they are also really maneuverable. They can move left and right quite easily, and as you can see here, I easily got him into the trap. Now I'm going to run up and try to slam that door shut, and nope, he's out. Okay, gotta run. Gotta run really fast. Yikes. Okay, that was almost bad. Now, even though it's a high level, I should be able to take a couple hits because my Tapehara has pretty decent health, but my stamina is down to half and I need to keep running until he loses interest and then I can rest and recharge. So this is kind of a difficult thing. He'll chase you for about 30 seconds to a minute before he totally loses interest. And if you get too far away, he will also lose interest. So it's tough to maneuver. Here he goes. Yep, he's right over the top. And that's one of the things that happens a lot with this trap technique. It's just hard to get the Argent to fly low enough. But if you've got it on top of a slope like I do, we're just going over the trap and then going down. And because we're below below the trap, he's much more likely to fly into it. And if you can get far enough ahead of the Argent, you can use that trap as kind of like a crosshairs on a gun and maneuver left and right to keep the Argent right in the center of that trap, and it makes it much easier to line him up and get him to fly right in. It's also a lot easier to line him up if you get him to chase you straight in a line and you start his uh, trajectory a little further out from the trap. So I'm going to need to lose this guy and recharge my stamina, so I need him to stop chasing me. Oh good, he did. They really have a short attention span. Now they seem to keep on you a little bit better if they actually hit you, but that is going to hurt you, and if you don't have a ton of health, you could be in trouble if an Argent hits you. Now if you head straight for the back of him, then a lot of times you can get him to come after you, but because you're right by his tail feathers, he won't actually be able to hurt you until he turns around, so you can use his bad turn radius against him. But if you fly too far away, he totally loses interest, and that's a pain too. Now usually you'll hear him screech before he comes after you, but he doesn't always do it. Like right there, there was no warning. He's just coming after me, so I'm trying to keep just close enough. He's lost interest. We'll get his interest again, and now I'm going to head straight towards the trap, use the trap as a crosshairs, and line him up, and I'm going to get just a little bit below the terrain, and perfect. Okay, he's stuck. Now I need to land. I missed my landing. Yikes. All right, now I need to slam that door shut as fast as possible. Whew, okay, we pulled it off this time. Now he's got the door closed behind him. He's totally trapped, and there's no way he can hit me. So now I can just start tranking him down at my leisure, 
And I'm starting out with a lot of headshots. Now, usually I would aim mostly for the body, but you trank him a little bit faster and do more damage if you shoot him in the head. But I'm a little bit less worried about killing this guy because I brought a magnifying glass with me. Now, I told you a couple episodes ago when I showed you how to use the magnifying glass that it's only sometimes helpful in somewhat rare circumstances. Well, this is one of those circumstances where it's very helpful because I can get close enough to get a reading on his health and torpidity without actually getting killed by this Argent. So this is a really good time to use this, and as I see that he's getting too low on health, I can start shooting him in the body to make sure I don't accidentally kill him with headshots. Also, it's great for those of us that are a little bit impatient to see that we are actually making progress, because sometimes you can shoot these guys with like 20 or 30 arrows, and you don't know if they're even taking taking any torpidity damage, and you may figure it may be a minute or ten minutes before you actually knock them out. So that magnifying glass just takes all of the guesswork out of it. And if you want to see how to make and use that, I've got a whole guide on that. Check the description, I'll put lots of helpful links to a bunch of good information like how I tamed my other Argent Avis, and a whole guide on how to use an Argent Avis for combat and taming. So be sure to check out the links in the description, they'll be really helpful. Now this is getting pretty obnoxious. Noxious. I've hit him with so many trank arrows, he looks like he's got a headdress or some kind of mange going on there with all those arrows sticking out of his head. Yikes. But he looks like he's finally running away. He stopped trying to attack the stone building, and now he's just trying to escape, which is great. We seem to have him trapped pretty well in there, thank goodness. It's real important to have that foundation at the bottom, because if you don't, he may escape down a slope or something like that. So, looks like we've got a pretty good shot on this guy. I'm shooting him in the leg now because he is getting kind of low on health, and I'm also slowing down my attacks because I don't want to kill him. He's down to 300 health, but he's almost maxed out on his torpidity, which means he should pass out pretty soon. Now, I'm waiting 10 seconds between shots because that gives the maximum amount of torpidity and the lowest amount of health damage, and there he's just about there. Maybe one more shot should do the trick, and it's a good thing because he almost died. Okay, perfect. So, he is now down, he's unconscious, and I brought 25 superior kibble to tame this guy, because I have so many Tapehara eggs, I can make a ton of kibble. Now, if you're playing on Nintendo Switch, you don't have the new kibble system yet, and the best way to tame an Argent with Arc Mobile or Arc Switch is Stegosaurus Egg Kibble, which is made when you put a Stego Egg, one Citronal, or lemon, one prime meat jerky, two medjo berries, three fiber, and one water into a cooking pot for a couple of minutes, then you'll get that stego kibble. But I've got an entire guide on how to make superior kibble and any of the kibbles using the new Arc Homestead kibble rework system, and I'll put a link in the description for that entire guide so you can make your own kibble, which will help you tame things at the maximum efficiency. But if you don't have kibble, you can use prime meat or regular meat, it just takes about 10 times as long. But by using nothing but superior kibble to tame this guy, he will be the highest level when he finishes taming, and he'll probably gain about 50 levels in the process. I'm also using biotoxin instead of regular narcotics to keep him unconscious, because biotoxin is about twice as effective. And I have a guide on how to get biotoxin and how to use it too, it's really effective. So while this guy is taming, I'm heading back to my raft fortress and I'm going to get an Argent Avis saddle, which will be really helpful because then I can fly him when he finishes taming up. So now that I'm here, we'll be right back. I'll grab some supplies and then I'll show you some other stuff that I did while the Argent was taming up and then we'll finish taming him and take him out for a test flight. And we're back. And while we were gone, I got a whole bunch of materials to make the Argent Avis saddle, which is a pile of hide, a ton of chitin, and a whole lot of fiber too. But you can craft it right in your inventory, and I'm actually going to keep some extra chitin. So 
In the middle of taming the Argent Avis, I happen to run into a pretty good level Dodicarus, and it's a female, so I am trying to tame a female Dodicarus at the same time as the Argent. So I'm going to grab some vegetables, and we'll use those for taming the Dodicarus at a much higher rate than the berries that I've got. I also happen to have enough materials in my fridge to make like three other kibbles that I'll be able to use for taming that Dodicarus. So we'll see if we can leave this Redwood Mountain with some pretty good high-level Argent Avis, and hopefully another Dodicarus too, which will be a girlfriend for the Dodicarus we already have. So once again, I am flying way above the trees, because if you get in line with the Redwood trees and you get too close to them, there may be a Thylacoleo there, and they can pounce across the screen onto your back and just kill you and your flyer, even if you're not even that close to a tree. So I just stay away from the redwood trees altogether as much as possible. Even though you can usually see a Thylacoleo if it's on the tree, I don't even get close to him. Another cool thing about that Argent Avis saddle that I just made is it actually works as a mobile smithy. So your Argent becomes a smithy as soon as you equip it with that saddle. And you can make things like bullets and other useful things or repair your metal items right there on your bird. An Argent also reduces reduces the carrying weight of a lot of materials by 50%. So you can load it up with stone and crystal and stuff like that, and it will actually reduce the weight of those items by half. So it makes a very good pack mule in the air, which is another great thing about it. Now, I haven't shown you this in this episode, but we are also taming a female Dodicarus at a pretty high level this whole time we've been taming up this Argent. And aside from that, I am also going to tame a couple of Archaeopteryx, which are really interesting dinos. They basically work as a hang glider, and you can carry them around, but they only eat chitin, which is why I grabbed a stack of chitin to head back up to this mountain. So I won't show you those tames in this episode, but in the next couple episodes, I'll show you what I've been doing while I have this Argent Avis very slowly taming up to maximum efficiency. And if you subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications, it will tell you when those videos come out, which will probably be in the next couple of days. So that will be something fun to look forward to, and we'll be right back when the Argent finishes taming and then we'll take it out for a spin. And we're back, and as you can probably guess, spoiler alert, the Archaeopteryx tame worked. So that's this little chicken looking thing that I'm carrying over my head, and I look ridiculous when I'm flying with this thing. But check it out, the Argent finished taming. So we finally got that to tame up, and you may notice something's a little bit wrong with me. I am floating in the air. Well, actually, I'm holding on for dear life because this poor little tiny bird is trying to carry me, and I I'm just floating around. So I'll show you how to actually control an Archaeopteryx a lot better later on, but for now we're just going to put it down on the ground and ignore it. So check it out. We finished taming our Argent Avis using this really simple trap, and now I'm just going to demolish one wall and we'll be all set. Now I'm equipping that saddle, and as you can see, he now has a bunch of different folders which make him a smithy. So that's pretty handy. And it looks like I'm going to have to do some hunting soon because I'm just about out of meat. But I will demolish the rest of this trap, which really was not all that much stone. And check it out, we now have this majestic Argent Avis. And I don't know if you noticed it, but it tamed up to level 206. We started taming this Argent when it was level 138, and now it's 206. So it gained a lot of levels because we tamed it almost well, actually, we tamed it exclusively with kibble. So that is very helpful and very effective. So I'm just going to swing back down here and check out how my other tames are doing. And spoiler alert again, we managed to tame up that other Archaeopteryx too. So I'm going to carry all these guys back up to the mountain where it's nice and safe. And we will get everybody together. And when this Dodicarus finishes taming, she's just about there, we'll fly everybody back home as a nice happy family, which I can probably do all at the same time with this Argent.
And we're back. So I have been packing up all of my dinos, getting them all ready to head back to the base. And as you can see, we finished taming that female Dodicarus. We have a female Archaeopteryx and a male Archaeopteryx up on the top of this mountain. So I'm going to try to get back to my base with all five of these dinos, which actually I should be able to pull off. Now, you can technically carry a bunch of dinos with an Argent Avis. So I am going to click down on the right stick to pick up this male Archaeopteryx in his beak and I have the other Archaeopteryx in my hands it's riding on my shoulders the top Ahara is going to follow me and then I'm gonna hit the left trigger to pick up the Dodicarus with my claws and there we go we have an entire little dino army right here in this Argent Avis's talons now he has like a thousand stamina so I should be able to make it all the way across the redwood forest from this mountain without actually going into the forest which is a very good thing because you will totally die if you go in between the trees and a thylacoleo attacks you and it would be tragic to lose all of these dinos at the same time so that is basically all you need to know to tame a really high level Argent Avis using a very efficient trap that you can build really quickly. It's a little difficult to get him into the trap, but it definitely works. Now, if you check the description, I've got another entire video on how to use an Argent Avis and all of the cool things you can do with an Argent. And I've got some other cool tricks for how to actually use an Argent and Dodicarus team together to gather crazy amounts of wood and stone without ever touching the ground. And there's a lot of other cool tricks that I'll show you, so check the links in the description. There's a bunch of helpful stuff. I also want to give a shout out to Captain Fat Dog who comes out with a lot of really crazy arc building tricks and his design is what inspired my Argent Trap here. I modified it so you can use it without structures plus elements but he was the one that came up with the general concept. So if this video was helpful or you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and like this video. And drop a comment, let me know if you have any tips for Argent Avis taming, or if you have any tips on Argents in general. I always love hearing your comments. And let me know if you have an Argent Avis and how you tamed it. And be sure you subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications because there are more great helpful guides on the way and you'll be able to see how I tamed that female Dodicarus and those two Archaeopteryx, and I'll actually teach you how to use Archaeopteryx for hang gliding and all kinds of fun stuff too, and you won't want to miss that. Also check the link in the description for the YouTube channel that my wife and I are working on together called the Console Co-op Couple. And the two of us play a lot of co-op games on Nintendo Switch. It's a whole lot of fun. She was a guest on this show in the last episode. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. And that whole channel is just like that video. So if you enjoyed that, you'll definitely want to subscribe over at our new channel. And it will help us out a whole lot. But until next time, I hope your ARK adventures are full of fun and not a lot of death. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARK Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARK is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There is a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.